In this video, we're analyzing a hand from the final table of the Triton London 200k buying event. This hand showcases a high speed collision between two crushers at the very top of their game, with several recent final tables and huge scores between them. As we'll see, although chip leaders generally avoid direct confrontation, sometimes the invisible hand of variance from a cold deck forces the issue. Sweet. Head to wow. the jack, 9-8 board. And Brewer has flopped the second nut flush with Jorstad flopping top set. How about this for a dynamite flop? And with Brewer coming in with the under the gun open and now checking this flop, certainly Brewer can have a lot of hands like ace king, ace queen, but no clubs that may find some check calls, but don't want to bet on this texture and Brewer. So Brewer starts off with a check and we see that the solver checks his entire range in this spot. This is a function of the clear nut advantage that the preflop in position cold caller enjoys on this middling connected board. Typically, the preflop aggressor carries the nut advantage due to its overpairs, but when both players can have all the nutted hands as a general rule of thumb, the player with the tighter range will have the edge, since these hands from a probability standpoint will make up a greater proportion of its range. And an in-position cold caller, particularly from early position, needs to be very selective with the types of hands he flats with because of the significant risk of being squeezed behind. Accordingly, in Espen's shoes, the solver bets its entire range to leverage this nut advantage. And this effect is amplified by the impact of ICM. Since Espen covers Brewer, the payout jumps should make Brewer more inclined to fold, particularly with a very short stack in the big blind. This is also reflected in the under the gun's response to this bet, where in the non-ICM sim, the solver raises with significantly higher frequency compared to the ICM sim, where just flatting is the preferred play. Representing a weaker part of a pretty strong range from under the gun with the call. Well, how oh my God, what is happening here? And note that Brewer is drawing live <clears throat> but just immediately looking over at Espen and has to know that when Espen calls preflop can certainly have nines, eights, and jacks sometimes as well. Just flatting there. Pocket tens, of course, also a possibility. But can't love the board pairing when you have a flush against a range that can have a lot of boats. Just checked over. Who comes out firing with a size of 480,000? Immediate discomfort for Chris. Knows that your stat can nines H jacks, perhaps jack nine suited, as well as stronger flushes. Stronger <laughs> flushes are concern as well, Maria. You know, maybe an ace ten, or sorry, an ace five, an ace queen of clubs. Yeah. In early position. I think that ace queen of clubs can just flat the under the gun open. And it feels so gross, but with the presence of that straight flush possibility, cannot fold here. But you can just tell he doesn't love it. So Espen gets the dream turn and he bets on the larger side, which the solver does at a decent frequency, but it predominantly prefers the smaller sizing, having essentially wrapped up this pot. Interestingly, we see that in the non ICM sim, the solver only uses the larger sizing due to Brewer's mid heavy range, filled with hands like trips and overpairs. However, when we remove the smaller sizing and force both sims to use the exact same strategies with the exact same ranges, we see that Brewer's turn defense changes dramatically in the ICM sim, where it folds nearly 30% more often. So although the equities of the ranges are the same in both sims, ICM has the effect of skewing expected value in a way that forces the covered player to overfold relative to chip EV. Hence, in the ICM sim, 
The solver also implements a smaller sizing to allow more of villain's range to continue versus the many nutted hands Espen can be holding. And also, as a consequence of this dynamic, in the ICM sim, the under-the-gun player does virtually no raising versus this bet. I think at this point, Jostad knows that he's up against the legit strong range overpair with a club, a flopped flush, 1.6 million in the middle. <laughs> For a sight of the hand, third in chips. To get Pardo. It's currently on eight bigs, would be a disaster for Brewer to go home in 8th. Does Espen go for the jugular? Knowing that he covers so much of the board. Oh. Crazy fucking hand. So Espen jams with his quads, which is going to be the standard play at this SPR in position on the river. And interestingly, the ICM sim is much more aggressive compared to the non-ICM sim, where the solver increases its bluff frequency substantially when the covered player is facing the possibility of losing out on a pay jump. So the only remaining question is, what should Chris do with his second nut flush? Perhaps at first glance, many would think that this is just a side call spot, given that his hand is so strong, and the players only started out at around 38 big blinds effective. But of course, in poker, strength is a relative concept and can't be assessed in a vacuum. The full context of the hand from preflop through the river must be taken into account. With an under the gun raise, a plus two cold call, and a triple barrel shove, both ranges should be quite narrow and strong. So with a paired board and with both players capable of having all the super nutted hands, the value portion of Espen's range is likely going to be primarily full houses plus. This means that even if you think Espen shoves the nut flush here, Chris's holding is a mere bluff catcher. So this decision comes down to card removal, which is a function of how Chris's bluff catchers match up with Espen's value combos and bluffs. On the value side, Espen could have queen ten of clubs, pocket jacks, pocket nines, and pocket eights. And on the bluff side, Espen could perhaps have a hand like ace queen or king queen with the queen of clubs, maybe ace queen with the ace of clubs if he value bets the nut flush here, pocket tens with the ten of clubs, and then maybe some random low equity hands like pocket sixes or sevens with a club that he barrels off hoping to get something like an overpair to fold. So the next question is, what types of hands should Chris be calling with? Well, obviously he's calling with his full houses plus, but that's probably not enough to fortify his defense from a theory standpoint. He'll also need to call with some bluff catchers, prioritizing the combos that have the best card removal properties. Given that it's possible that both Espen's bluffs and value combos could contain a queen of clubs or ten of clubs, the blocker effects of holding these cards somewhat negate each other and Espen's low equity air balls do not interact with most of Chris's bluff catchers. So ultimately, the differentiating factor will primarily be based on Chris's hands that block full houses or quads, which should make up most of the value portion of Espen's range. In that regard, Ace-9 would be a good calling candidate since it blocks pocket nines. We see here that Ace-8 pure folds, but this is because the solver did not use Espen's larger sizing at high frequency on the turn with pocket eights. But if it did, then Ace-8 could sometimes call. However, it's questionable whether Chris even opens this wide under the gun, so it may not be the case that these are real life bluff catchers in his range. The next best bluff catcher would likely be Trips, though it's not the number one candidate because there's a much lower probability of Espen holding quads, which means that, relatively speaking, if Brewer were holding a jack, it would reduce a smaller proportion of Espen's value range compared to a blocker to the full house. And then we have Chris's flushes. Now most of these hands are basically indifferent between calling and folding, including King-10, as we can see by the EV regret. But if we want to get real precise, the lower nut flushes are likely the best calling candidates because they unblock most of Espen's bluffs. So taking all of this into account, as well as the ICM factor of bust out leverage, King-10 of clubs could probably go either way as a call or fold. One thing to keep in mind is that these outputs are highly sensitive to the exact ranges down to the proportions of each combo, so as a practical matter, it's not so important to get the frequencies exactly right. Rather, the key is to have a general sense of how much calling you should be doing overall based on the bet, 
and then prioritizing calling with hands with better blockers and folding the rest, which against most opponents should be enough to keep them on their toes. So the $4 million question is, without the benefit of this output, does Chris have the discipline to actually let this hand go? I... <laughs> I bought the fucking flush. Not often you hear I Brewer... I value, but I don't know if I can fold. Immediately throws out all of his time extension chips, Maria. Has 17 time extension chips in front of him. I don't I don't think I'm supposed to call it at the time. It's a really wild fucking hand. <clears throat> you have some ace 10 ace queen clubs. No, you don't have ace 10 clubs. It's probably the only nut flush you have, because you probably three bet little ones. Probably three bet jabs. You don't flat attack man suited. That was nines and eights. Nines, eights. Eights, ten. Eights, queen of clubs. Counting the combos of value hands that have him beat here. And just wondering how often does Espin have offsuit combos of ace-x with the ace of clubs that he right. calls the open from under the gun with? I know it sounds crazy, but I don't think there's that many. I need you to have like sevens with a club and just fucking gun it. <clears throat> I hold this and I'm wrong. It's just like the worst decision I have but... I think Bro is coming to the right decision here, Maria. Well, if you don't think your stat is going to flat your under the gun open with, say, Ace 10 off. Like, I, mean, I don't think you'll any... It's just so hard to fucking have a bluff here. Exactly, and we'll only really have like Ace Jack off or Ace Queen off because he'll three bet Ace King off. Hold. Very, very unoften. I am gonna call sometimes. It's funny how some distance makes everything seem small. And the fears that once controlled me can't get to me at all. It's time to see what I can do to test the Fold, Maria. Yes. Lays down the King Ten of Clubs and lives to fight another day. And he's going to look back on that one and give himself a real pat on the back. He is still in this fight. Bravo, Brewer. Well, Bravo. What I, was, 